After ruling out the rhythms at a glance, which are so typical that you should be able to recognize them immediately, we'll now continue the evaluation of rhythm problems in a more systematic way. One feature of a rhythm strip that's a real eye-catcher is when the heart beats super fast, something we call tachycardia. The word tachycardia consists of two different Greek components. The first is tachys, which means fast, and the second one is cardia, which means heart. Tachycardias can come in various forms. Let's look at some examples. This is fast. This is fast too. And what these two tachycardias have in common is that they are rapid and regular. Well, every tachycardia is rapid, but not all are regular. What do I mean by regular? Well, regular means that the distance between the QRS complexes is constant. This distance is the same as this one, as this one, as this one, and so forth. And the same holds true for the tachycardia below. This distance is the same as this one, as this one, as this one, and it goes on like that. Now, here's a slightly different case. This tachycardia is rapid and irregular. You see that the distances between the QRS complexes varies. So this is different than this one, this one, and this one, and this one. So really no two distances are the same. We'll deal with rapid and irregular tachycardias a little later. So let's forget about them for now. Rapid and regular tachycardias can come in two different forms. One is a broad complex tachycardia, and the other one is a narrow complex tachycardia. Let's check them out. Here, the distance from the beginning to the end of the QRS complex is 0.12 seconds, and as we already know, that is too broad. In the example above, the distance from the beginning to the end of the QRS complexes is 0.06 seconds, so this is a narrow complex tachycardia. Let's examine what causes a QRS complex to be narrow or broad. To understand that, we need to review the cardiac conduction system and how impulses are transmitted inside the heart. Let's recap. This is the AV node, this is the bundle of His, this is the right bundle branch, and this is the left bundle branch with the left anterior fascicle and the left posterior fascicle. When impulses are generated in the atria and are conducted into the ventricles through the AV node, the bundle of His, and the bundle branches, the ECG will look like this. Ventricular depolarization happens fast and therefore the QRS complex is narrow. Let's look at a slightly different example. If the impulse takes its origin in the atria, enters the ventricles through the AV node, but finds one of the bundle branches blocked, as in this example, the QRS complex will show a bundle branch block morphology and will therefore be broadened it will be 0.12 seconds in duration or longer. This example shows a right bundle branch block and what the ECG would look like in V1. If you're still a bit confused why the QRS complex is narrow over here but broad over here, then think about it like that. Imagine someone filling up a pool. In the first instance, they have a friend available with another second host, so filling up the pool will be much faster. In the second instance, they only have one hose available. So filling up the pool will be much slower. Similarly, depolarization of the ventricles will be much quicker if two conduction pathways are available, both the left and the right bundle branches. However, if you only have one hose or one bundle branch, such as in bundle branch block, the duration of ventricular depolarization, or in other words, the QRS duration, will be much longer. If the impulse is generated within the ventricles, as in this example, then it has to travel to the rest of the ventricles through tissue that is usually not well suited for conduction. So in this case, the polarization of the entire ventricle will also take longer than normal, and the QRS complex will be broadened as well. This is an example of how such an impulse could look like in V1. Since the impulse is generated in the right ventricle close to V1, and then travels away from V1, the QRS complex here is mainly negative. So here are two types of broad complex tachycardias. In the first one, a pathologic focus somewhere in the atria has started to fire at a very fast rate, overdriving the sinus rate. 
It travels to the ventricles but finds one of the bundle branches blocked. So we'll see a bundle branch block pattern. This is called atrial tachycardia with aberrant conduction. In the second example, the pathologic pacemaker focus is situated somewhere in the ventricles and depolarizes the heart in the way we just described. This type of tachycardia is called ventricular tachycardia. How can you discriminate between these two broad complex tachycardias? First, if a broad complex tachycardia has P's in front of the QRS complexes, such as in this case, it's probably atrial tachycardia with aberrant conduction. If there's no P wave in front of the QRS complexes, the patient probably has ventricular tachycardia. Sometimes you might even find P waves independent of the QRS complexes coming in at the slow rate of the undisturbed sinus impulse. But you need a sharp eye for that. We'll teach you some tricks on how to do this in a later chapter. For you, it's essential to know that atrial tachycardia with aberrant conduction is usually not a life-threatening condition. On the other hand, ventricular tachycardia can be life-threatening, and in most cases, you have to take action immediately. So it's really important to check how the patient is doing clinically. Is the patient in cardiac arrest? Are they hemodynamically stable? How is the blood pressure doing? I can't stress enough how important it is to be on the lookout when you have a patient with broad complex tachycardia. You must check the patient clinically. If you're sure that the patient has atrial tachycardia with aberrant conduction, you can be sure that it's probably not a life-threatening condition. On the other hand, if the patient has ventricular tachycardia, then you must be cautious. These ventricular tachycardias often hit hearts already jeopardized by extensive disease or previous infarctions. Hence, the situation may become very unstable or life-threatening quickly. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.